Hey guys, it's Daniel from Stone PPC. So in today's video, I wanted to go over keyword quality score. And I would say it's arguably one of the most important metrics you need to take a look at. And it really determines how much you're paying for a click, how many times you actually show up. And overall, if you have a decent quality score, chances are your ads are going to perform quite well as well in terms of CTR and also conversion rate. So today I just wanted to dive in and show how you can see what your keyword quality score is and also how you can tackle it some ways you can improve it as well. Okay, and this goes for both e-commerce and lead gen advertisers. I provide some tips for both. Maybe some are more for lead gen, some are for, more for e-com, but I hope you can get some key takeaways from this video. Okay, so first let's see how you can diagnose your keyword quality score and see what it actually is. So when we go to campaigns and let's click on one of our campaigns, We'll go to this ad group and you'll see that we have search keywords and right here we have different metrics here now i have quality score included here but the way that you can actually get quality score included uh, is right here so you would search for quality score and it would show up okay because i have that column already but yes we want to see the overall quality score but there's actually three components that make up the quality score that you have so Number one would be landing page experience. Number two, expect to click through rate. And number three, ad relevance. Okay, so let's add all of those. So landing page experience, ad relevance, and expected CTR. Okay, so what you can see here is we have our actual quality score, and then we have ad relevance, landing page experience, and expected click through rate. So what you'll see is you have an overall rating of quality score. And that's the sum of the ad relevance, landing page experience, and expected click-through rate. And what when you look at these different metrics, so if you're doing this alongside me in your Google Ads account, when you take a look, you can see your ad relevance might be a certain ranking. Um, it'll say average, below average, or above average. If you, know, you have uh, an average or above average ra ranking, but a below average ranking for another uh, category, then you'll see your overall quality score probably be around a five out of 10. Now, best practice when I uh, when I actually focus on keyword quality score is to get it to at least a five out of ten because from that point I can compete with competitors over CTR because um, the way the algorithm works like if it sees that I have double the CTR of a competitor but I have half the keyword quality score it still means that I'm getting twice as many uh, twice as much traffic to my site for that same uh, keyword so it's still gonna enter me into that auction so I can compete for that uh, for that placement and for that click okay so how can you actually improve these different metrics so now that you're taking a look at this you see okay this is my overall quality score or you may have seen that you had a uh, low eligibility due to quality score that's why you were wondering and clicked on this video so the first thing the first way that you can actually tackle you know ad relevance and expect to click through rate this goes into the actual ad that you have so it's basically google's understanding of how relevant your ad is and also how many people does it actually perceive is going to click through due to that ad so when you're actually in your ads okay you see here that we have uh keyword suggestions okay and it gives you those keyword suggestions because um, it wants you to include those actual keywords that you're targeting in your ads so if we were like a jujitsu gym for example we would want obviously jujitsu near me because if a person was searching that we want them to to see that but what we can do instead of just having this as a um, standard headline you want to press shift and then the open squiggly bracket so you can do a keyword insertion and then i would put in jujitsu gym near me and that way can give the best variation it shows the best variation of your headline to the person that's searching and it can increase your relevance as well now when i have low keyword quality score i usually include this one to two times so maybe this is the main keyword i want to uh, target but there's also jujitsu classes um, that i want to get that keyword quality score up for okay and i would make sure it's on title case as well so that um, it doesn't appear with lowercase it just looks better in my opinion um and then the last um headline i put as like get your free class so make sure you have a healthy mix of the actual keywords that you're targeting what i usually do is i, I put in a couple of keywords that i'm targeting add them as both standard headlines and also uh, as dynamic keyword insertions make sure you have two to three uh, ctas that you're testing out now i usually pin those into the third spot just because i don't want them showing up uh, in the first spot and i don't want to have multiple cp ctas for one ad variation so i don't want somebody to just see three ctas and no information about my actual service or product so that's quite important as well and make sure you include some usp so if you're a product-based advertiser you can talk about like the design of your product uh, unique features that you have 
And maybe if you are also like a class like this, or you have some type of service, you can still dis uh, discuss some unique selling points of your customer service. Maybe you're rated five stars and that will overall improve the actual relevance of your ad. So you want to test out different variations of this over time and just see how that affects your performance. Another thing when we were, when we press sh shift and the squiggly bracket, as you can see here, we also have a location insertion. So again, it just allows you to more accurately pair to the location. So if somebody's searching from a specific location, it'll show that in your ad as well. So I would say uh, Jiu Jitsu Gym Toronto, for example, so that it actually calls out that location that we have. Okay. Um, and those are just some examples within your ad, what you can include. Again, and another thing that you want to focus on is whatever you say in your ad actually needs to be included on the landing page. So if there's some inconsistency between that, like you have a specific offer or a promotion on your ad, but you don't have that same promotion on your landing page, then the user is going to recognize that inconsistency and maybe they wanted to claim a specific offer um, and they won't fulfill whatever action you wanted, whether it's make a purchase or um, sign up for a free trial, uh, just because they see that inconsistency in the ad and they couldn't find what they were looking for. Do the same thing in descriptions. Usually I'd add like two generic uh, unique selling points and then also the call to actions that you have. And then in the other two, I would also want to include specific keywords that I'm targeting. So again, you can see a common he theme here. We want to include the keywords that we target almost everywhere, because if we have that it indicates the Google algorithm that our ads are quite relevant. When you also make a Google search, you'll see like if you search for something, those actual keywords or phrases are highlighted in the person's ad. And you can see here, like you can see as well, if uh, it's highlighted like a couple times and then the ad usually shows up in that top four slots as well so that's important to make sure that you include your business name and logo again this is a demo account so i don't have access to that but make sure you can include as make sure you include as as many relevant assets as possible so your business name and logo also site links i would say site links and call outs and also structured snippets are quite important. Again, whatever is relevant for you, you want to include even price extensions or promotions. So I usually do this at the account level if I have a promotion and it's uh, for all my campaigns for a bigger account, obviously you don't want to manually do this for each. So you can include this and that also helps with the performance of your ad because if you have a promotion on your landing page and it's also on your ad, then again, that just improves, well, that just will improve your CT, uh, CVR, so conversion rate. Okay, so let's just click save ad for now. Okay, and another thing I wanted to mention as well. So what you didn't see there is that you can add in uh, your location. So your your uh, business profile location. So you wanna actually make sure that's linked because when we go to assets and we click on location, see there's nothing matched with my filters, but you wanna click the blue, uh, blue button and link your business profile. Um, so that you can actually show up in the map section if you're a local business, unrelated if you're e-com, but I'll just quickly zoom through this. Uh, because if you have that also included, um, it's just a, a additional placements of where your ads can show. And there's also more relevant information about what you do. So because your business profile lists certain information like your reviews, um, your, uh, your service catalog that you can't really list in the ads. So again, it's just another way you can improve your, CT, um, improve your quality score. So I would take a look and also link that as well. And you can observe the performance uh, improvements that you have from there. And the last thing that I wanted to go over was Google actually factors your landing page experience by taking a look at how long that person actually spends on your landing page. So the way that you can take a look at this, go to Google Analytics and also see how long people actually spend on your um, on your paid ad campaigns. And if it's relatively low, then chances are your landing page experience is also quite low. So in that, you might want to take a look at the actual keywords you're targeting, right? Because if it's not a directly relevant keyword to to what the person is looking for and your ad still gets triggered then maybe they click on that click on the ad but don't stay for too long because they weren't 100% uh, interested in that um, and another thing when it goes into keywords is take a look at your match types so sometimes this is in all cases but sometimes i found switching the match types actually changes the um, the quality score that i have what that the reason for that is because uh, if you're an exact match you're exactly matching to that search query so uh, Google thinks it's more relevant and it's your keyword is more accurate. So it might have a, a higher uh, keyword quality score. Again, you want to test this out. Maybe it doesn't work for you, but I've had it work for me in the past. And another quite important thing too. So if you have variations of your product, so let's say we have like right here, I have jujitsu classes near me and I have jujitsu gyms near me. What you can see as well 
is you may have completely varying keyword quality scores. Like you might see a three out of 10 for jujitsu gym near me, but a seven out of 10 for uh, jujitsu classes. Now, uh, there's not really a concrete answer as to why Google ranks, you know, two very similar keywords with a different, completely different quality score. What I would tell you is just if you're not able to improve the keyword quality score for one of your main keywords that you want to perform well, try to look at variations of that keyword that can perform well as, as well and try to rank better for variations. Because if it's closely related, then you really don't mind just focusing on that better performing keyword. Because again, if you have a seven out of 10, that's a lot better than a three out of 10 and your ads can perform a lot better too. Okay. So I hope that actually just gave you some concrete tips as to what you can do and go into your accounts, what you can do and actually change in your accounts and how to actually improve your keyword quality score. I hope you just take a couple of these tips into account and just apply them and see if that actually improves your quality score. This has definitely helped me in the past. And these are usually tips that I, these are tips that I actually take into account myself. And that's how I improve quality score. Those dynamic keyword insertions play a big part. Like if you've never included those in your ads, they definitely can help improve the keyword quality score. I've definitely seen an improved keyword quality score for some of my clients that were struggling with it. So I suggest you give it a try as well. Okay. Thanks so much for listening and I'll, and I'll see you in the next one.